Hello, 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 and welcome to yet another episode of the Conversation Capital with myself, Ursula Mariani. This is the Get Ready With Me episode where I do make up while we answer your comments and questions and things like that. And um, if you don't like one of these episodes, make sure you skip over to where we have a guest. People have been grilling us, right? Uh, uh-uh, I don't, I don't think so. I think, yeah, it's been coming up here and there. But okay. People love these episodes. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but we should actually just stop making this disclaimer. I think we should just every now and then. Let's do it. Bye, but... How are you? I'm good, sis. How are you? I am awesome. Thank you. Giving you mic'd up. Yes, I am. Hi and welcome. Hey, hi, hi, yeah, hi. You don't like the mic lately. Me? Mm. No. It's giving on the mic. It's not that I don't like yes. the mic. You've just had guests. Mm. That's yeah. all. No, it's nice to hear your voice. Welcome, <laughs> welcome. Yeah, I love it when we have given on. Um, reflections. Weeks reflections. Remember we added that little thing? Okay. I was thinking about that on my way here. So I'll start. Okay. Um, so there's this... Uh, person in whatever space i won't mention then it will be too obvious Mm -hmm. and then people have been saying this person like things highly of themselves and whatever 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 whatever. Mm -hmm. and then i was speaking to someone and i was like you know what i'm really challenging myself lately if i have a comment on a person to see where it stems from from me so do you think that person thinks highly of themselves or do not think highly of yourself are they just living in are they just living in their true sense or in their true potential? And maybe perhaps everyone around them, it makes them uncomfortable because they're not living in, you know, who they wish they were or who they wish mm. they were arriving as. Mm. Or So I've been like challenging myself to be like, before you, you almost like not personalize. I think that's the uh, a lack of a better word. I'll say personalize. Mm. But before you like, maybe, yeah, project. Mm. Let's say that. It's project. Before you project. Mm. Like if you find someone is... I mean, there are instances that are clear. But I feel like yeah, okay, someone thinks they are better than other people. Mm. I'm I'm starting to really interrogate. Why do you think that way? Mm. Is it because of how you think of yourself? Um, and let's say they do think better of themselves. Mm. Is that anything wrong? As long as they're not um, doing things to make other people less than. Mm. It only has to do with them and how they present themselves and how mm. they show up, you know? Mm. So yeah, I've been interrogating how I read scenarios. Are they a reflection of how I feel about myself? Are they a reflection of how we feel about that person challenging us or whatever, you know? Obviously, in some contexts, this will not be applicable because there are some places where it's clear what the person doesn't think highly of other people but yeah Mm. just interrogating why i feel certain ways or why my response is a particular way i love what you're saying because i I think maybe it was two years ago i read an article around um it's easy to identify something in somebody else that actually resides within you Mm. and and ever since then it's really changed the way i see things like when i notice somebody's being impatient or when i notice i interrogate what is it in me that is actually like that that i can identify it so quickly Mm. so the article basically spoke around the psychology of being able to identify negative traits that actually lie in you Mm -hmm. or lie dormant in you so is it not your own arrogance that helps you identify other people's arrogance and then there were two things that i thought of when you said that it was that first one of being identified being able to identify um things quickly negative things and they irk you out because they actually lie within yourself and then the second one was um when kanye west in an interview says would you rather i call myself a nigger than a god Mm. you know like why is it that humility must be like yeah yeah aspired upon or be the 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 the, the pinnacle of everything yes you know and he's like you know people don't have an issue with rappers speaking of their women as bitches and things oh am i allowed to say that on the internet i don't know <laughs> you know but referring these very derogatory terms mm. but the moment you say a queen a nubian queen or mm. hey the arrogance you know like mm. kanye's taking on this whole you know god persona and whatever mm. and and it, it's a tricky one especially yeah. the god one yeah um but i heard that that element that it's so much easier to hear somebody it's, it's soft on the ear mm. to hear somebody speak down on themselves and to hear somebody celebrate themselves absolutely you know in society. and there is fundamentally an issue with that you know yeah. it's so much easier when you meet with someone and they're like oh what was me so much is going on and unlike you told me everything <laughs> yeah. you have to be very comfortable to share your wins with people true 
you know but unlike your yours i don't know about you but for me sad things i can tell them all the time like Yo, you won't believe you can't say like <laughs> with a stranger yeah but i won't easily be like hey you win the lotto you know that mm. whole there will be signs with the lotto yes. there's a reason we say stuff like that yeah you know because we know that people can garner sympathy for you when you're going through issues mm. but when you're really celebrating and you're enjoying it's I need to keep this thing a secret. Mm. There's something wrong with that. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. I like that reflection. That was cool. Mm. My reflection is, mm. Ursula finds two or three comments and we're being grilled. Yeah. <laughs> two or three. I'm glad we agree because I also feel like I know. It's not dead. <laughs> not at all. Okay. It's not deep at all. And I, and I think I, I just said that to say that we don't need to make the disclaimer because it's not really even a thing. A thing. It's just one or two people, Jay. Yeah. That, it's just that like the one or two people are always so mean. Ah. Yeah, like excessively mean in there. Remember, we spoke about this. It's the internet. Reflect. Mm. Yeah, reflect yeah. Okay. on yourself. The okay. public space. Okay. okay. They must reflect. Is what? it you or is it them, Ashley? <laughs> ah, Bong, I just yes. said. Is it you? <laughs> These are real questions that I need to answer. <laughs> My reflection this week, I sat some time thinking on it like so heavily and I, I can't believe it took me almost a year to get to this place because mm. something happened about it, over a year ago to somebody else. Hey, this is going to sound very... But you did it very well. You managed to keep yours very vague until you got to the point. So let me try to also keep mine very vague. But something happened to a very close friend of, uh, of mine. And then I learned the lesson there. And now I wanted to apply it to all the relationships around me. So basically, it went along the lines of like a friendship breakup. Mm. And she had basically just held on to a very toxic friendship for too long. Mm. And, and I remember feeling very sad when the French breakup finally happened because now the friend had done something way too toxic mm. and remembering that I was the person who kept saying no stick it through mm. no you guys have been friends for so long and I, I realized mm. that I was you know Enabler. I was enabling this person mm. to be toxic when she kept saying ah man this friend doesn't love me like they mm. once did you know and and then now I felt hey these friendships you must cut them quickly because you can get hurt very deeply if you allow this toxic. And I wanted to apply this everywhere. Mm. And and so I went through a really difficult era last year with my friendships. And and I just found myself being very hard in my approach. Like, are you in or you out? Are you right or you wrong? Are you toxic or are you right? You know, like, you know, and realizing that I had taken somebody else's lesson and I had personalized it way too much mm. because I got such a fright seeing and I think we often do that. We often like really take on people's traumas sometimes, mm. you know? So I found myself taking on somebody else's trauma so deeply that I was now reevaluating and with a fine tooth comb, mm. my friendships, you mm. know, like every word, you know, mm. all of a sudden give a maki like a red pen, there, which is not me. <laughs> there are some who have never jollied before. Go to the peace. Yes, I'm a tot. I'm a tot. Who have you dated yes. you? And you often speak of this. You say that women share so much. Yes. You, you that you end before. up living vicariously. Vicariously yes. with someone else. Because everybody's um jolo yanis. And you're right. Some people have a joy. Exactly. So, you know, exactly. when I live your truth and mm. yeah. So it was interesting that I, I went through that and I'm only realizing I did that now, mm. a year later, you know. And I remember when one of my friends said, hey, what's going on? I remember just thinking, I need to do this. I need to protect <laughs> To myself. safeguard myself. Yeah. yeah. And only now I see what she was saying that, hey, where does this come from? Where's mm. this energy? Yes. Yeah. You know, so that was my reflection this week. Mm. When I shared mine. When I used yeah, your, your grilled, reflection for yes. <laughs> What's up, first comment? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then this comment is on the episode, yeah, are there benefits to being divorced when you're younger? Mm-hmm. And then ZY Go T says, going through the comments, I find women leaving marriages. I wonder what's wrong. Why is it always women finding for divorce? Hey. I, I, I I don't know the statistics. Do women find for this divorce? Yes, more? they do. That is, yeah, okay. that is fact. Yeah. Okay, that's great because I don't want to say. But one of I the things, um, one of the things, I don't know if this is really a true reflection. Um, if we were to ask women that are divorced, but I think there's more move away from glorifying marriages. I was about to you like know? that's my comment as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know how true it is for women that are divorced, but I think there's this general thing where women are just not centering their lives around well, 
not as much as before i mean there's a lot of centering around marriages being a wife being a mom etc it's still there but i don't think it's as rampant as it used to be and the whole biggest healing thing i don't think it doesn't um it doesn't find expression as much as it used to yes i also think a second layer to that is that it doesn't have to because there was a time women needed marriage to be at a certain status in society Mm. to you know even you know to earn Mm. and those those inequalities are slowly but surely you know bridging Mm. especially financially because i think women's biggest pro was like some sort of financial game because men were the breadwinners men were getting yes. good jobs yes you know men were being put into industry mm. and this is a really long time ago but only now women don't you don't need a man mm. you do marriage and love with someone because of love true you know whereas before we're moving from an era where women needed mm. to be in marriages mm. Mm. and i was having this chat with a few friends of mine after paddle recently yes i play paddle now. <laughs> And after paddle recently, and it was just a chat of like, what does marriage look like right now? Mm. And why is it necessary? You know, I, I'm, I'm still very pro-marriage. But just to answer the questions, why do you need to get married? Mm. What does it look like? Why is it necessary in this era that we live in? Mm. You know, whereas before we can understand a lot of your, you know, societal status and, uh, you know, your ability to accumulate wealth depended on you being married. Mm. And, and now that that's no longer necessarily a key feature for your growth that's true and 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 like for example you hear a lot of women on social media groups giving each other advice to say you must have a footsec bank bank account Mm -hmm. so this is a bank account that you hide from your partner to make sure that you're storing money in there should things Mm. go south you know go south so that speaks to the fact that Mm. with the right economics Mm. i can leave yes you know and a lot of women actually not a i'm I'm using a lot loosely but um you find that um i'm in this marriage habangola anonymously online i'm in this marriage i have nowhere to go i don't have family blah 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 i would like to leave Mm. but it's because of the lack of resources that i'm not able to leave no yeah a lot of unhappy women stick around for money that's the truth yeah um and i think abusive men do cripple women financially absolutely yeah that's like key num- note number one the, the, there's something that was floating around on twitter where um x now um the guy said it was someone i can't remember if they were speaking about their friend or whatever but the the essentially the husband said to the wife um i can take care of you leave your job and let's and talk in let's just let you be take care of the house mm. and the kids and then the wife was like yeah if you give me a portion of your company and actually it happened on tiktok mm. um and then moved on to x mm. and then um apparently at the end of the 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 whole conversation or what whatever period this happened um the husband gave her 49 percent of the company that was her rule sure. to leave her yeah. job yeah. because like you said one of the ways abusers mm. could cripple you is by removing your independence yes absolutely mm. and i mean how many of us in this um uh in our dating stages are able to leave because we don't need anything from you and a wild thing i'm reminded by we're thinking of it in a romantic relationship mm. I, I remember a friend of mine saying that she feels that her mother had uh, maybe and maybe I'm using the friend the word friend loosely, but something that had like crippled her um, because she's so abusive, like not paying for school, but paying for her livelihood mm. and for her child's livelihood. Mm. And she was like, "But if it's anything like a, a course, yeah, or then no, no, that's too expensive." That for comes me. across a lot. That happens quite often. And then she's like, "You know, I'm so old now, but only now I'm seeing that my mom's always wanted me to be dependent on her and not really created room for me to stand." Which is very interesting. You don't expect to hear that with a parent dynamic. Mm. You expect a parent to want you to be independent. Mm. You know. So I remember mm. hearing that and being like, "Oh, that's another element." Because mm. it's still abusive. It is. Mm. This is why whenever we have these um, social discussions, mm. um, I always, I always think to myself like, what exactly would the real research behind it reveal? Uh, mm. Because there's a lot of assumptions people make when it comes to like issues of divorce have so many assumptions. Yep. Uh, the one that is a very common one, like very common, it, it's almost universal. The things that lead to divorce are finances, loss of a child, or sexless marriages. 
uh, or sexless marriages or cheating, basically. So those are quite universal. It might vary country to country as to which one is at the top. Uh, but money is almost always at the top mm -hmm. as to why people uh, actually divorce and leave marriages. Um, so another thing I'm thinking is it also is very contextual. The answering the question from 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 the um, comments, mm. it's very contextual as to why women file divorce. Because here's the thing, narrative is very powerful. Mm. Narrative can literally paint a picture to people that sometimes in some instances it doesn't exist, but you are convinced that it does, right? Um, I had a, uh, we, we just spoke about this now. I had a colleague, was it a colleague? Share with me, Uguti. Yes, it was a colleague. She has a friend who lived vicariously through the experiences of other women in her life um, because they had ba bad men. So she decided that gen men are bad, mm. right? So she got a good guy and treated him with that expectation that you're actually bad mm. the dude was decent taking care of, of her and everyone around her was like dude you've got a decent guy but she treated him as a predator like anytime this dude could change and she only realized later once he had left mm. Uti, that was actually a good guy mm. so i'm saying this um in everything i'm building up to is to say this um, more often than not i'm convinced of the fact that there's a lot of men in south africa who who I don't even want to use the word struggle, but there's a lot of men who are trapped in this idea that a man can beat a woman, mm. right? Trapped in this idea that a man can cheat, but a woman shouldn't. Mm. Um, I don't, I'm not going to give any numbers and I'm definitely not going to say the majority because that can def that I've learned through my, my partner is a social scientist. So she works a lot with the, these types of statistics. And often the more you zoom in, you actually learn that what the narrative people speak and share with each other, taxis at work within the office, it's not the, the what's actually happening. Mm. Yeah, it's not what's actually happening. Mm. It, it it really you really gain a lot of perspective when you look behind the curtain mm. into people's homes and actually see uh, there's a conversation that we were having Ursh, uh, mm. at my place where a lot of people how many people do you know who talk about the fact that a lot of women after giving birth can't have sex mm. some of them it lasts up to eight years mm. what man wouldn't cheat in such a circumstance mm. right i'm not saying that it's the right it's thing all, to it's do okay, yeah. yeah i'm not saying it's okay but it's not a common conversation there's another thing that i learned about that's quite um common it's a, a, a thing that women uh, tend to have um sometimes it's linked to trauma sometimes it's not uh, it's called veg, uh, veg something, man. Mm. Some I forgot what I forgot what it's called. Where you literally cannot stand penetration, mm. right? Mm. Imagine marrying someone; they don't know they have that, and you don't know that they have that. Yes. And then now you find out in marriage, and it, since you married me for money, girl, <laughs> mm. <laughs> and now mm. we find ourselves here. So my point being, there are those. I do think in South Africa, the things that are a big problem is abuse, cheating. Those things are a very big problem. Mm. Um, I will not say majority of men are, are trapped in that. But then there's there are those other things that are behind the curtain as mm. well that we often don't really talk about. Mm. And I can imagine being trapped in this narrative, you are men are bad and you think <clears throat> you are not like a, a bad guy. Like I can imagine mm. that. For example, where I was chatting to some guys and they were like, all men cheat and i'm like guys i genuinely believe not all men cheat mm. there are men out there who not do not cheat, cheat. Mm. like mm. i you cannot convince me that all men cheat mm. and mm. and they were saying to me no um ah, we are men we know and yes. i'm like but you don't and i'm like even the men in your circles who say some of these things some of them don't even cheat exactly. they're saying them for social conversation mm. and to fit in and all of these things but i genuinely believe they're human beings who don't cheat mm true and if true. that's naive that's fine <laughs> no but I, I i completely agree with you not yeah and hey and it, it's such a far-fetched idea for people like they cannot believe or there are people out there who, who do don't not cheat, cheat. exactly like mm. Mm. okay and then on the episode with nosy you know i did this horrible thing where i took comments mm -hmm. without um game, showing the part of which episode but uh -huh. we'll we'll try and make them up as we go okay. so i have been following who's this anita says 
I have been following Nozi since lockdown, ne? On all her platforms, ne? I've listened to her story so many times, even been to one of the events she was invited to. But listen, one thing, I never tire from listening to her tell her story. Oh, Nozi, what a woman. So gracious, man. Her energy, ah, man, I love her so, so much. I cannot wait to visit South Africa per and purchase her book. God bless her more and more. Why I screenshotted this book, this particular comment, other than it was a, an endearing comment to Nozi, mm -hmm. It's just to say, um, if guests, future guests, whatever, watch this, people think sometimes they're like, ah, but they've heard my story so many times, or my story has been mm -hmm. somewhere so many times. Say that. Yes, we've had guests say that, and there are truly people who do not mind listening to a story a million mm -hmm. times, or mm -hmm. there are so many more people who haven't been exposed to your story yeah, that are on yeah, our for platform. Me, my perspective is you have no idea. There's so many people in Salva alone. You know, not everybody knows. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Exactly. Mm. So, um, on the topic, yeah, a plight of being a chubby black woman in South Africa. This episode was with Nungu, mm. Um, So, Michele says, when I saw this title, I knew I had to watch this because I'm a size 30. And in my view, chunky girls are winning, like on social media. Men seem to prefer bigger women. And in a lot of stores like Woolies, I don't have a sign. Size, it show, it goes to show we, have, we all have our struggles and we need to judge people less and not assume their personal experience. Thank you for sharing, ladies. Mm. I also, I love this comment because yeah. it was just a reminder that the grass is always green on the other side. Mm. I could never imagine she's a size 30. Mm. 30. 30. Mm. I can't imagine a size 30 saying they don't find a size. I only see size 30. Yeah, but I can imagine why she wouldn't find It's probably she's very tiny. So, mm. Utole, there are sizes, but they don't fit her the way they, she wants to. If anything, I'm jealous of a 30 because they can go into the children's section, teenager section. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I'm no I, I don't mean that's a joke. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't think they're gonna like that <laughs> yeah the clothes aren't designed the same at all <laughs> my friend was a size 28 30 in bars and she would always shop at the kitty and we were always so jealous of it so i mean it genuinely like an <laughs> because of size or because of the options she had more options and the you know she just loved going to the kitty section yeah i suppose that's uh, that's a person who actually enjoys doing that yes some but people kid clothes are not designed the same as adult clothes no, you can as soon as you, as soon as you walk into the kitty <laughs> section, there's going to be a person who's tiny who's going to be unless like, uh, unless you probably know someone who knew where to go mm. to get kids clothes that are designed that aren't really designed to be kiddy. Yeah, mm. I get you. Yes, yes, yeah, because she, she they were like nice jeans, and yeah. then she's like, oh no, I got and they're cheaper, section. eleven to twelve. Have you seen 14. now? Have you seen now? Fourteen year old dress. Well, this was back, this was, you know, 2011, 2012, but she would always look really nice mm. with her kitty's clothes. You know, I like this comment so much, ne? because a person who gets very angry about people's comments on my weight is a very skinny person. Mm. She hates it because people have commented on her weight so much mm. that every time she feels like going to the person who was commenting on my weight and you think because she's smaller maybe she wouldn't like relate, she wouldn't relate. right uh. but people have told her to drink mafura uh. people have told her the wind would <laughs> would blow her away like mm. she has so much what is this passion towards mm. weight topics that mm. listen so i really like this because she's she's uh, she's a ujile. You know, people just bother her so much. And I, I can I can say I'm guilty of not being so sensitive to slimmer people. Yes. For me, only us chunkies have issues. Yes. You know what I yeah. mean? And, she and really, I see how that's wrong. Yeah, it's very wrong. Yeah. It's very wrong. Like mm. she says, it goes to show we all have our struggles and we need to judge people less mm. and not assume their personal experience. Funny story, we were talking about this in the taxi. Mm. It's winter now, I guess. Mm. So, <laughs> so obviously I'm chubby and then I'm sitting next to this man. Man. Mm. and then i move okay someone gets off so obviously there's more space for us to sit so i move away and then he's like hey what's the wabanda match and we were talking about it <laughs> like <laughs> That's funny. That's so funny. It made me laugh, yes. Uh. You know, some comments are so... <laughs> And you know what? I really felt it. 
because also when I moved away, I felt the, you know, the breeze. <laughs> so I feel you, sir. <laughs> and how the topic came up, the girl was, we were just talking about taxis. So, yeah, I need to mention, you funa ni tina manji. Ni funa tina ni akoto. Yeah, guys. I hope your partner isn't listening to this. I know busy for too much. I want that they take sick. <laughs> okay mm. and then on the barriers to graduating as a psychologist in south africa here we had tando kazi maseti um ad says hi tando i was literally in the same classes as her i'm now a registered wellness counselor in private practice which is good and that and that there's that now the mental health field is getting more accommodating i love it Mm -hmm. you can still help people counsel and open a practice as a counselor while trying to get into masters if that's what you want my aim was always to practice and do short courses to expand my knowledge and expertise one of my lecturers said you have to decide how is becoming a psychologist important to you and why Mm -hmm. if it is to help people you can do that even as a counselor and if you want the title and a bigger scope you can fight your way into my masters it's as simple as that Mm. she said i personally enjoy counseling and only screening not diagnosing i'm not sure i'd be comfortable to tag to diagnose currently my focus is short courses on my specialities i'm interested in going deeper into trauma especially childhood anger and grief so yeah there's a lot you can do there's enough room for everyone mm. i love that and 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 speaks to the topic we had there's a guest we had on who spoke on being a counselor as well i forgot her name mm-hmm. given no but spoke on being a counselor yeah was, uh, um abuse she works yeah. with abused kids D- Dine, dine. oh dana. Yes, dana. dana yes so she spoke about that as well the route where you can be a counselor you know there's mm. so many options for us these days and i think that's so awesome i think she spoke about that off camera but you're right she did talk about it okay mm. H- excuse, about you know, the different avenues different avenues yeah because she didn't go the master's route you're right it was off camera it was off camera, it was off camera. Off. yeah they yeah. actually dana and her team they actually train uh, those who I think have their honors mm-hmm. uh, because you can only practice from master's onwards. Yes. So those who have their honors, in fact, there are a few organizations that train uh, those who studied psychology and maybe mm. were able to do their honors, their um, masters. Um, no, not ma- masters. You can practice, mm. uh, manage to do their honors but weren't able to do their... To get into a master's program. To get in, yeah, because yeah, exactly. I remember how they started to spoke about how difficult it is getting to a master's yes, clinical, yes, yes. especially. Yeah. So I think it's also a push. I think we should mention that it's also a push from government Oh. Uh, to make sure that there are more... And I think it started during lockdown where we needed... There were too few um, uh, therapists for the people for the things people were going through and then they encouraged people to move into counseling mm. um so i think they they had a push towards that as well mm. i just wanted to mention the, the 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 condition that i was talking about earlier is called uh vaginismus mm. and i'm just saying it because there are people who struggle with it who don't even know that it yes. can be treated that you can there's certain thing or even what it's called yeah so you can probably google it it's vaginismus you know this reminds me of a pain i used to feel during my my periods mm. um it's in the bum i can't remember what it's called but it's this mm. sharp pain mm. and when people started speaking about it on social media i was like Phew, wow mm. because i was scared well maybe it's because i'm sexually active mm. or you know mm. i didn't i didn't want to speak about it because it seemed so foreign <laughs> no it's <laughs> i'm telling you Ursula, like even when i mentioned it to the doctor like there's this pain and i was scared to mention it because i'm like what is because you're busy i'll say from my personal experience i don't know about you but that pain always goes with being cold yes that, that's the period pain that comes with coldness. Yeah, if it's you're exposed just, to the no, cold. Mm, yeah. It usually and doesn't then, happen in summer, and, but winter. Yeah, and it catches you off guard. And then, mm. like, people were speaking about it on Twitter, and I'm like, yes, this finally. Is the one. Yes. Mm. <laughs> you know, speaking of this and you going to the doctor, I'm remembering, um, I think, uh, we're, 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 well, we didn't talk about it, but we mentioned it earlier off camera. Uh, men not wanting to go to the doctor. Mm. Uh, when it comes, if I felt a pain there, I'd be like, ah, I'll be fine. <laughs> Just Absolutely. drink some coffee. <laughs> I, I I know someone who was telling me uh, 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 about their husband who was struggling with piles. I want mm. to go every day, to put on the kid, go 
to the doctor. What, like, to, no. what to do? What to the pad? So the blood from the piles. Oh, That's how bad the piles were. Yo. But just doesn't want to go. Like just scared that you know. No. Mm. What is what is the doctor gonna say? I was doing really. <laughs> Like it's not really? it's not as small of a thing uh-huh. as as you yes, yes. you making it sound like it's it's like okay let me not mention that one let me rather put it this way men and women it's like water and sand there are things that water struggles with mm. that sand has no idea and cannot relate to and there mm. are things that sand struggles with that mm. vice versa right mm. like and I think it's the reason in fact the fact that you're saying really is the reason why men don't go. <laughs> because that's a, the response to our struggles right yeah. really really you understand that's the reason why we don't go or present in like think about it this way right mm-hmm. imagine if i'm i'm feeling uh pain in my testicles right mm. who do i go to if i go to a male and i'm like a male now must touch me there and men generally <laughs> just don't feel comfortable with that look kudos to you if you're listening to this and you're a man you're like aha <laughs> right yeah. men generally just don't men don't feel comfortable with sleeping sharing the a bed mm. you understand you have to have mm. some you look the face that way yeah. or something a you know? now imagine someone is going to be cobro cobro <laughs> <laughs> and you must say no 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 it's there mm. <laughs> right to the left, to the left. it's yeah, a very yeah. serious thing and i think it it's more to do with how approach more than anything mm. um I, yeah i think it has more to do with approach but like if you go to a woman now you must tell a woman would take eh, mm. mm. it's also uncomfortable mm. even though i'm sure most men would probably prefer, prefer that a woman yeah exactly but there's also that element of you're going to reveal yourself to a woman yes. and say i have a pain over there mm. 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 so um i'm gonna use this comment to wrap this up now uh, Masi Chaba says, please consider having a woman, a black lady preferably, to talk about growing up with a present father in the household. There is something about girls who were raised by both parents with very present and positive fathers. They just seem more confident and it would be great to hear how having that has influenced their lives. This exchange was so long, but it was yeah. so nice. It was, it was. You know? Yeah, I'm also hoping you go through the exchange because people started commenting yes. under that. Yes, yeah. so I'm going to do that since you said that. I didn't want to. I wanted to summarize, but I mean, it's so good. But then a person responds to say, I'm sorry, guys, I don't know which episode this was. Do you know? Mm-mm. I don't. We'll, 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 we'll put up. Uh, no comments about two parents we'll, growing up we'll in the same. Yeah, yeah, we'll look for it okay, and we we'll add okay. it sharp. So then the person responds to that said, "Hi, hi, I'm a black woman that was raised by both parents. My dad was calm, supportive, and, and loving. I'm very confident and assertive, but I, I doubt it has anything to do with my dad. I think people exaggerate the role of a dad and underrate the role of economics." Mm. Then someone says, "That is a very interesting perspective." Thank you for entertaining my comment. I always made the assumption that just having a present father figure gives rise to you being confident and assertive. Do you mind expanding on what you mean in terms of the role of economics? And then the person says, another person says, I doubt it is an exaggeration. Please observe those around you who grew up without the type of father you had. Privilege is not only through the lens of race of, or, or money, but experiences that some of us don't even know we need. And then Masi Chaba responds to say, a two-parent household means there are two salaries, better schools, better houses, better neighborhood, and thus a better person. Stress shares between parents means less stressed parents, meaning if your mom was lesbian and raised you with her wife, you'd be living in a two-parent household with two moms. You would stand the same chance as a two-parent with a mom and a dad. Plus, fathers only participate in parenting when they are stable. Then someone goes on to say, Mas Chaba, I like your comment. I understand that what you were saying. You are talking about internet, intentional presence, being seen at home by both parents. Whew, so impactful because you are watered. Yes, that is exactly what I'm referring to. This is some, some someone I am aware of. I genuinely believe that fathers play a critical role in terms of the type of um, woman you become. I do, of course, acknowledge that there are some f- other factors at play. So it, a, it's, it goes on longer, but essentially, um, you grew up in a two-parent household. What do you think? How did it affect you? I did Me. too. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I loved the exchange. Yeah. I agreed with the part of around confidence. It definitely has more to do with money. 
the economy mm. because i see it with with Lutanda, Imali. Hi, 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 hi. No. <laughs> Even with, when we were talking about marriages, Ursh was like, yeah, it's economies. When you come together, economies are good. Thank you, Imali, my friend. Can I finish? <laughs> I'm not defending nothing. <laughs> so, uh, I was about to say, I see it with my friends that grew up in wealthier households. Mm-hmm. And Malcolm Gladwell, I speak about it all the time, speaks of the confidence kids from richer homes have to have a voice and to feel, you know, entitled to be in a certain, entitled is a very bad word, but you know, they feel, belong, they belong mm-hmm. in a certain um, space. Mm-hmm. And, and these are just facts. It's, you know, and I think that has a lot to do with a child's confidence. I also see how coming from a better background allows children to take bigger creative risks with their career. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you come from a more impoverished background, you're more likely to be a bit more safe with regards to the decisions you make. Um, And and so you'll go the the teacher route, the social worker route. Whereas somebody that comes from a a good family background allows themselves to take a risk that will probably make them the millionaire, Mm. right? And they're allowed that risk because they can always go home. And there is money to, they, they won't end up on the street. However, when that option is not there, right? It does happen that somebody from a very bad background takes a risk on themselves. But very often people that are, have the capacity to take risks, right? And are more confident in certain spaces is because they've got less to lose. Mm. So even in a workplace, you find yourself not in a position of being apologetic, but owning that I belong here. We see it with white men. Mm. You know, the confidence that they have. And so, and like being apologetic. I was watching um, a series that's actually based on a true story. I've forgotten what the series is called. But they teach on the lesson and they give the numbers and whatever. And I'm, I'm Googling and it's true about how much women apologize. You know, because women have been taught this. You know, we say it all the time like, oh, sorry, I'm late. Oh, mm. s- sorry. Maybe sorry, I'm late is a bad example. But things that you're not really supposed to say yes, sorry for. Yes, yes. You find women doing that often, mm. right? But it's not often that you find men doing that mm. and, you know, things like that. So I think that there are those factors around being confident and then around being confident because of two parents. This is now my second opinion on that because it was the two statements. One was from what money, the other one around two parents. Um, both my parents were very present, but if, if I'm to be honest, the person that really injected uh, both of them, right? But I'll, I'll give my mom 10 out of 10. Yeah. My mom is like, she told us every single day and I don't know, I don't think she was doing it with some sort of psychology background that I'm making these people confident, but my mom told us we were beautiful every single day and she would find creative ways to say it. My mom would say stuff like, oh baby, under that light when you're standing in the sun, mm. you know? So it wasn't very generic, like, oh baby, you're beautiful. Mm. Oh baby, beautiful. Till today, my mom says every single day, sometimes I look at her and I see how much she means it. She really just thinks her children are so beautiful. But, and what would happen is at school, cause I was a bit chunky. Kids would say things, but I always had this thing, mm. and it was because of my mom, mm. you know, and I can't, I can't necessarily say that if my dad wasn't around, would I not have been that confident? I don't know. Mm, you don't know. I don't, I really don't know. Mm. Maybe that, that backing was always there, but I know that my mom really pushed this. You're beautiful. Mm. You're beautiful. Where you couldn't tell me otherwise. Mm. You get what I, you couldn't tell me otherwise. You could tease me about things. But you couldn't tell me otherwise as a mm. child. I have an interesting perspective here because mm. I grew up in a single parent household. Mm-hmm. And then I am currently raising my daughter in a two parent household. Mm. So I I definitely have, I'm, I'm working on and intentionally uh, building a home where my daughter doesn't have to go through that, that experience. Mm. While at the same time being fully aware and having fresh in my memory what it's like to grow up in in one. Mm. First of all, I can say this, a single parent household is much worse the more kids the single parent has. Much, much Mm. worse. That makes a huge difference. I know that people have a tendency to say things like, no, but the more kids you have, it means you won't be alone the older you get. It it does a number on on the parent. Mm. I have seen how exhausted my mother came when she comes back from work and having to deal with all of our issues, our rudeness, our different Mm. phases, and having to keep up 
with all of us. Mm. It it really did a number on her. Uh, and this is something that I experienced, like I actually saw growing up. My One of the things my sister says a lot about my mom, which I really think it's something that she doesn't like about her. My mom spent a lot of our childhood sleeping. Mm. Just, just, and I think it was her way of just dealing with being overwhelmed. Mm. Um, also, with a lot of debt that my mom had to go through as well, trying to get us through school mm. and all of that. Um, there's, there's a lot that a single household cannot, let, let alone finances, right? Because mm. finances are more of the nodoy, obviously, two parents, two incomes coming into a household. There are certain things that you are unable to provide a child when it's just you. Absolutely. You don't see it because you are, uh, you don't measure how much you could give a child, how much attention, for example, you could give a child when you're alone as opposed to when you have a, a, a partner with you. Absolutely. You understand? So I've mentioned before in an episode we've done, Wuti, I mean, I see it with my daughter, right? Um, my daughter has the privilege of being able to enjoy, you know, like, for example, when my, my, my partner is busy cooking, I'm busy playing and looking after her and mm. pushing her on my office chair um, and, you know, distracting her somehow mm. so that she, she won't be disturbing her mom. Mm. And then we, we switch those vice versa. Yes. You know, I'll be doing the dishes when she's done cooking and she'll be feeding her. Mm. Um, and that makes all the difference so that we ourselves can have, you know, there are, there are some parents who shout at their kids Ngati, ye, 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 ye. It's mm. like you're fighting with someone who's your age. Absolutely. And I yeah. think it's because of that thing where you don't have someone to just tag you out yes. so that they can take over. And mm. I do understand and agree that this is not a, an exact science mm. uh, or exact maths because you do get parents who maybe the mom or the dad, it's a two parent household and you get the mom or the dad just abusing kids, mm. even though they'd have someone to mm. tap them out. So it's not an exact science. But like you, you said, uh, that is a very good exchange actually there in the comments. Lovely. Like they con you, you concluded there, Guti. It is, it does have to do with the parents themselves being intentional. Yes. Like make use of the fact that yeah. you have a partner and tag each other out. Yeah, I, I wanted to say how many, like there are a lot of people who grew up in a house with both parents, but the dad is abusive or the mother is abusive. Yes. It's not always the story to say a child who comes from two, a, a king, a two a uh, parent household will always be a good story mm. you know um, i think it's those statements you have to make and give the disclaimer of ceteris paribus yeah given that all things <laughs> remain the same Give <laughs> <laughs> on that ceteris paribus note <laughs> what does it mean given that all things remain the same Ceteris paribus. So you assume you you, you don't need to dis define every circumstance. Mm. You just everyone assumes given that everything is a constant. Yes. The co yeah. Everything in a perfect is, world. Yeah. Ceteris paribus. Mm. Then you give your statement. Mm. Um. What do you want to say? Hey, what's it really? Yeah. No. Right. Yeah. Pele, I, I did say I'm wrapping it up with this Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, guys. Ceteris paribus. Uh, <laughs> That was today's episode of the Conversation Capital. If you have not liked, shared, and subscribed yet, why not? Make sure you do that and continue to share, continue to subscribe. Thank you for the support so much thus far. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pinaldo, goodbye and God bless. <laughs>